Namaste. Man's interest in the heavens is perhaps as old as the beginning of his career as Homo sapiens on this planet. It did not perhaps take the primitive man a long time to discover some kind of relationship between the cycle of his activities and the regularity of the heavenly phenomena. He noticed that his hunting seasons and more particularly his sowing times when he settled down as a primitive agriculturist depended on climatic changes for the seasons. Such cycle of events in the life processes on the one hand and the regularity in the heavenly phenomena on the other inevitably led to a time sense. Methods of marking and measuring time was mastered by ancient Indians whenever human civilization sprang up and had their normal course of development. In the sacred literature of the Hindus, the Jains and the Buddhists, such a skilled sage has been referred to as astronomer and his science as astronomy. In the Mundak Upanishad, astronomy is included in the list of several branches of Vedic studies. In Vedangas also, Jyotish is one of the Vedanga and is considered the eye of the Ved Purush. The Chandakya Upanishad has it that Narad, upon being interrogated by Sanat Kumar as to the range of his knowledge, replied, I have learned the Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, the Sam Veda, and the fourth, the Athar Veda, the Itihas, and the Puran as the fifth Veda grammar, the science par excellence, the obsequies of Manu, the art of computation, omens, the revolutions of periods, speech, ethics, scriptures, sciences, appendant on holy writings, the abjuration of spirits, the military science, astronomy, snake charming, music and mechanical arts. In explaining the scope of astronomy, the Vedang Jyoti states, the Vedas are revealed for the purpose of performing sacrificial rites. These rites are laid down in order of time. Therefore, he who is versed in astronomy, the science of the reckoning of time, knows the sacrifices. In the Brahman literature, we come across the term Nakshatra Darsha, meaning a stargazer. Another term used to refer to an astronomer is Ganak, which literally means a calculator or a mathematician. As I said, Jyotish is called the eye of the Ved Purush. It is unfortunate that there is no work available at present dealing with Vedic astronomy in the Sutra style. Only we have a small book called Vedang Jyotish and Maharshi Lagad is regarded author of this Vedang Jyotish. Vedang Jyotish details several astronomical attributes generally applied for timing social and religious events. It details astronomical calculations, calendrical studies, establishes rules for empirical observation and details several important aspects of time and seasons, including lunar months, solar months and their adjustment by a lunar leap month of Adikmas. Ritus and Yugas are also described in Vedang Jyotish. Tripathi holds that 27 constellations, eclipses, 7 planets and 12 signs of the zodiac were also known at that time. The Vedang Jyotish was also considered sacred in perspective of being considered a part of the Vedas and its reading and reciting was considered a custom. It has only 44 shlokas. There are two versions available known as the Arch Jyotish and the Yajush Jyotish. One belongs to Rig Veda and other to the Yajur Veda. There are three basic units to measure the expansion of the universe as per Vedang Jyotish and these are Aharatra. Aharatra means day and night. Lunar month which is the length of time from one full moon or new moon to the next full moon or new moon. And the third one is solar year, 
which is the time for a full revolution of the earth around the sun or exceedingly the sun around the earth moon's transit tree amongst the stars was fragmented into 27 more or less equal portions and each part was called a nakshatra which could be visually identified by a specific group of stars in that area every nakshatra is given the name after that group's brightest star likewise the sun's transit tree comparative to the adjacent stars was partitioned into 12 approximately equal parts called rashis once more called after the brightest star amongst the star group in that area we indians are certainly indebted to maharshi lagat for presenting this unparalleled work to us which tells us about the calculation of time so minutely if you want to know about the scientists of ancient india and science in ancient india please like and subscribe the channel and check the playlist science in ancient india and scientists in ancient india thank you